In this video, we're going to be looking at the following example. We want to find the area of one petal of the rose curve given by r equals 4 sine 3 theta. So we're talking about finding the area of a polar curve, so we're going to need to use that polar area formula. So remember that formula is that ra equals an integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. Okay, so we're going to have an integral from a to b, we don't know what those bounds are going to be yet, of 1 half 4 sine 3 theta squared d theta. Okay, so we're going to have to do a lot of work to figure out what these bounds need to be. So it'll be really helpful if we're not given a sketch to be able to get a sketch of this curve and then to figure out um, when we're at um, certain points along our curve. Okay, so I'm going to sketch some axes here for us. So what are going to be some key values? Well, we know already know this is a rose curve, so if you remember from that um, sheet of special polar curves that I gave you, this is going to look like um, several petals that are going to go into the origin. So we'd like to know where R is zero for this curve. Okay, What are the different angles um, that I'm going to be going into that origin at? So I want to see where is 0 equal to 4 sine 3 theta. That'll give me some key values about the angle in which my petals are going into the, the pole. So I want to say for what theta here is 0 equal to 4 sine um, 3 theta. In other words, where is 0 equal to sine 3 theta. Okay. Remember that sine is equal to 0 when I'm taking sine of 0 or pi, okay, um, also at 2 pi and 3 pi, okay, and I could keep going here, but notice when I would divide by 3, this gives me the angles for theta of 0 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, and pi, okay. And one of the things that we mentioned about our special polar curves here is that this um, rose curve here where I have um, some a times sine or cosine of n theta. When n is odd, this is going to be traced out on the interval from 0 to pi. Okay, and we'll see why that is when we start actually plotting some points too. Um, but I know that um, this these angles here will cover all my all my different possibilities because I've gone through everything that's in that interval from 0 to pi. Okay, so what's another key value here? Oftentimes, um, for many different curves, we'll be interested in where that curve is equal to zero, where the radius is equal to zero. Another key point will be um, where we get a maximum value of our curve. Okay, notice a lot of our polar curves are going to be defined in terms of our trig functions. We know that sine and cosine both have a maximum value of one. So the biggest that r can be here is four. Okay. And the smallest that r could be is negative 4. Okay, since sine has to be between 1 and negative 1, this 4 sine 3 theta will be between 4 and negative 4. So we'd like to know where is it hitting those, those values. Those are actually going to represent the tips of our petals, which is the furthest away our loop would be from um, the origin, from the pole. So I want to say, well, where is 4 equal to 4 sine 3 theta? Okay, well, that's where. 1 is equal to sine 3 theta. Okay, so 3 theta is my angle. So this is going to be where 3 theta is equal to pi over 2. We know that sine of pi over 2 is 1. Um, I'm not quite done yet here, but notice that that's going to give me pi 6. Okay, where else am I going to hit 1? Well, it won't be at 3 pi over 2. It'll be again at 5 pi over 2 when I would come back to that same um, pi over 2 location. Okay, so this gives me 5 pi 6. Okay, and notice that's all the angles that I'm going to get here because 5 pi 6 is just a little smaller than pi. If I kept going, I get something outside of that interval from 0 to pi. So what about where I'm going to get negative 4? Well, that's where, oops, negative 4 would equal 4 sine 3 theta, or where negative 1 is equal to sine 3 theta. Okay, so notice that this will be where 3 theta is equal to the angle such that sine of that angle is negative 1. We know that that's 3 pi over 2. Okay, where are we going to hit 
um, that same location of 3 pi over 2 again. Notice that's down here. So I can say, okay, that's 3 pi over 2, then I'd be at 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2. It looks like I'd get there again at 7 pi over 2. Okay, so that means I'm looking at theta values here of, let's see, divide both sides by 3, pi over 2, and 7 pi 6. Okay, so what do we notice about the 7 pi 6 here? That's actually bigger than pi. Okay, so we just have pi over 2, so where we're going to hit that r equals negative 4. So this is outside the interval. That'll actually end up going back over some place on the curve that we've already um, determined. Okay, so let's use this to help us draw the curve. Um, notice these angles here. Okay, these are all angles um, at which our curve is going to go into the origin. Okay, so I can sketch these angles of theta equals zero. Okay, notice that that's right here where I would have theta equals zero. Okay, then I'm going to have theta equals pi thirds. That's about here. And if you have some nice graph paper, that's where um, that this can come in a little bit handy in doing some sketching. This is theta equals two pi thirds. Okay, and then over here I have theta equals pi. Okay. Um, I also have these key values here. Theta equals pi six was going to be where I was going to get to the tip of my petal, and five pi six. Okay, which is over here. And then we also had theta equals um, pi over two. Okay, but that's corresponding to the point r equals negative four. So I'm going to have the point r comma pi over two, negative four comma pi over two on my curve. So notice that would be something that would make an angle of theta equals pi over 2, okay? But then instead of going um, in the pi over 2 direction, I would be walking backwards. Remember we think of that the negative r's as like walking backwards. So I would have this point down here of the negative 4 comma pi over 2, okay? And these angles here might help for me to draw these lines. Going, going through the origin. Okay, so what is this curve going to look like? Well, I'm going to be hitting a distance of 4 here at pi 6, and at 5 pi 6, and negative 4 at pi over 2. Okay, and I know I've got um, my curve here being 0 to start with at the origin, then I got to get to this distance of 4, and then going back into the origin at this angle of pi thirds. So we have something like this to start off our curve. And it helps, like with parametric curves, sometimes to think about how that curve is being traced out. So drawing a couple of lines there. So after um, pi thirds, what are we going to have happen? Well, we're going to get to um, our pi over 2. That's an angle that comes next. So notice that I'm going to be going out here and then back in, OK, um, hitting um, our origin again here at this angle of 2 pi thirds, okay, and then going out to 5 pi 6 and then back in, okay, so we're getting our rose curve to look like this, okay, and so we saw that order in which it was traced out. We were here, then here, 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 okay. So we're trying to get a really complete picture of this curve. Um, partly because this is one of the first times that we've done something like this. We're also going to see how this helps us set this up in multiple different ways, just so you can see that there are several um, equivalent setups for one of these types of problems. Um, I also just want to show you um, another um, picture here of this curve. So it's, it'll look quite nice on this, this uh, graph paper here. Um, notice that I can start tracing this curve out. Okay, get up to pi 6. I've got half my petal, just like we saw in our picture. Keep going. We're going to enter that origin at an angle of pi thirds. Then next it's going to draw that bottom petal, okay, getting to that angle of pi over 2, but going um, in the, the opposite direction to facing pi over 2, because we actually have a negative 4. Going back into our origin, okay, and then going back out at that angle of 2 pi thirds, hitting 4 at 5 pi 6 and then going back into the origin, into the pole, at the angle of pi. So that got our whole curve. Okay, so there's the curve 
um, fully displayed here, but it's also useful to kind of know how that curve was created. Okay, so let's go back to our notes here and see how we can use all this work that we just did in drawing the curve um, to help us do the setup. And this work is helpful even if you already have a picture um, because you still might want to know um, what the angle was at some of those different points where we hit some key values. So what's a one um, setup that we could use for finding the area of one of our petals? Well notice that the probably most obvious one that you might start with is finding the area of the petal in this first quadrant. Notice it is saying just one petal, okay, so we don't want to go um, from zero to pi, we want to actually find the area of one single petal. Um, but I do have some symmetry here so I can find the areas of any of these three petals. If I want the one in that first quadrant, I can go from zero to pi thirds. Okay, so one way of thinking about that in terms of the work that we did over here is I'm going from the first time it hits zero to the second time it hits zero. So that closes off one single loop of the curve. Okay, so one setup here would be the integral from zero to pi thirds of one half four sine three theta squared d theta. Okay, so I'll just match this up with a little picture next to it here. We can think about what we just found. That's the curve of the, the uh, petal in the first quadrant. Okay, what would be another option? Well, sometimes it's going to be useful for us to use symmetry on these problems. So I could say, instead of doing that whole petal, I could do twice half of the petal. So I get to half of the petal when I go to that very tip at pi 6. So I could do twice the integral from 0 to pi 6 of 1 half 4 sine 3 theta squared d theta. Okay, so the picture that we have in mind, again, this is our whole curve here, but I'm just doing half the petal and then multiplying by 2. Okay, what else could I do here? Well, I have two other petals that I might want to describe just to think about what's going on here. So let's say I wanted the petal, the bottom petal there. Okay, this one. So how would I find that area? Well, that would be an integral from pi thirds to two pi thirds. Okay, initially that might be a little bit confusing as to why those would be the right bounds for that bottom curve since an angle of pi thirds to two pi thirds, oops, pi thirds would be here and two pi thirds is here. Seems like you're saying I'm ca capturing some area that's up here and there's, there's no petal there, but between pi thirds and two pi thirds, our radius that we're working with would be negative, which is why that's actually capturing the petal here that's reflected between pi thirds and two pi thirds. Okay, so pi thirds to two pi thirds of one half four sine three theta squared d theta is capturing that bottom petal. Okay, this is just trying to help us think about the details that go into working with polar curves and things that we have to be maybe a little bit more careful of because of the nature of our polar coordinates. Um, we have these multiple representations of points and we have situation like, like this where the combination of the, the angle and the radius you know pushes things into into the reflected area like we see here. Okay. So what about maybe that third petal? What would that look like? Okay, so if I want the petal over here, this would be an area from what to what? Well, looking at our picture that we have here, it looks like from 2 pi thirds to pi will capture that area in the, um, the, second, the second quadrant there. So I could say from 2 pi thirds to pi of 1 half 4 sine 3 theta squared d theta. Okay, gives us this petal here. Okay, and any one of these, these four different setups that we've gotten would give us the same answer, the area of one of the petals of this particular rose curve. Okay. Um, Let's see here. 
So what remains to answer the question is to sort of pick your favorite formulation and then actually go through and compute the integral. So I'll go with the first one that we had here, but you could have used any of these okay, to compute your area. So now let's compute the area. This will involve um, reminding ourselves about some, some nice trig identities that we learned earlier. So let's use the formulation that we have the area of that first petal, which is our integral from 0 to pi thirds of 1 half 4 sine 3 theta squared d theta. Okay. Notice that when I would square that 4, that's going to become 16. So I'm going to have 16 over 2, or 8. So I'll have 8, the integral from 0 to pi thirds, of sine squared 3 theta d theta. Okay. So notice here I have an even power of sine. So if we think back to um, one of our earlier sections when we looked at trig integrals, we had rules for dealing with um, even powers of sines and cosines versus situations where we had an odd power of sine or cosine. So the even power cases, we just had an even power or two even powers, we needed to use the half angle identity. So this is going to come up all the time in these polar curve problems because we're frequently going to be squaring, because that's part of our, our formula, squaring the radius. And the, the radius, or our f of theta, our polar curve, will often be defined in terms of some sines or cosines. So remember that sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. Okay, So here, my sine squared 3 theta okay, will be 1 minus cosine of 2 times 3 theta. So I'll have to have this times 6 theta, or of 6 theta, um, divided by 2. Okay, and I can bring that divided by 2 out front. Okay, so what is this going to give us? So we have 4 times now our antiderivative, so I'm going to have theta minus sine of 6 theta over 6. Okay, so the derivative of sine is cosine. When I'm taking the antiderivative of this cosine 6 theta, I have to divide by that 6 that we have there. And this is evaluated from our 0 to pi thirds. Okay, so notice that I'm going to have pi thirds here minus sine of 6 pi thirds, or sine of 2 pi, once I plug that in. We know sine of 2 pi is 0, okay? Then I'm going to get minus what happens when I plug in 0. I'm going to end up with 0 minus 0. Since theta would be 0 and sine of 0 is 0. So notice that our final answer here ends up being 4 pi thirds. So this is the area of one of our petals of our rose curve. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on this example.